Hey, what's up you guys? I just got a new toy that just came in and I wanted to share with you guys my install process for this new Dometic CFX 40W fridge freezer. Hey, welcome back guys. So this Dometic fridge is the uh, CFX 40W. This is a fridge freezer, so it's one or the other. Most likely I'm going to be using it for the fridge function. And uh, they're, they're available in all shapes and sizes. Um, I went with the 40 because I wanted to make sure that it actually fit in my 4Runner and that I can actually access it still when I open the latch. So a couple days ago, the uh, CFX 3 line just released. And um, as far as I can tell, really the only thing that has changed has been cosmetic. Um, I don't really see a lot of new features or even sizes for that matter. Um, they seem fairly similar. Um, the only thing I noticed was the price tag was a lot higher. I think for the equivalent uh, size for the uh, CFX line, um, I think it was about $9.59.99 or something like that. Um, I paid about $7.20 for this plus tax, so around you know just less than $800. So I do have a Arctic um, cooler that served me well for a while. Uh, I've used ice packs mostly. Sometimes I buy ice. It's kind of rare. One of the problems with ice pack and ice is that it takes up a lot of space and it's kind of messy, um, you know, especially ice when you have to clean it up. Uh, the ice pack's not so bad, you just take it out, but it does take up a lot of space and you can only fit so much stuff in there before it gets really full and then, you know, it's kind of cramped. So my hope is when I get this fridge installed, I'll have a nice place to put things. Uh, if we go on a long trip, we go overlanding, we'll have, you know, ample space and not have to worry about ice and things like that. Things will be cold, drinks will be cold, food will be cold. And, um, you know, really the only thing I have to worry about now is making sure my car battery doesn't die. So let me show you where I'm going to install this. So right here is probably the place I'm going to use. And uh, I already got one tie down point. I'm going to put another one somewhere right here so I can kind of cross it. And then I'm probably going to put one more back here in the middle. That will give me three points so it doesn't move around. And this tray right here actually slides out so I can get access to the fridge a little bit easier. I'm hoping that I can still access it even though it's in here, but we'll see. And then over here, this outlet is already wired to always be hot. If you guys are interested in knowing how to do that, I'll put a video link description. And then... Um, let me show you what else I upgraded in anticipation for this upgrade. So in here, originally I had a Group 24F battery. Now I have a Group 27. So it gives me about 20% more capacity. Apparently the 2001 Forerunners came with this larger Group 27. It bolted right in. The tray on the bottom doesn't quite fit, but this strap holds it down. That's all that matters. And um, should give me about 85 to 100 amp hours, which should be able to power the fridge for quite a bit. But I am a little worried about draining the battery completely. So I actually do have a spare jump pack inside the vehicle. All right guys, so I got her in here and I plugged it into this 12 volt outlet. And one thing that's happening is this light's staying orange, which can't really see that, but yeah, there you go. Just means that there's not enough voltage. So you can see here it's on now and then it shuts off. And I think what's happening is there's not enough amps in that outlet. So I'm probably gonna have to rewire that or hardwire it to a new, uh, new line or something. So what I'm gonna do now is just plug the 110 in and hope that that works. All right, so I got it plugged in and you can see now it's solid green. It means that the fridge is working. That's because that 110 is plugged in. So I think I'm gonna have to rewire that. And I'll probably save that for another video and I'll show you guys how I do that. But I know it's gonna be a pain, but that's okay. So um, I've already set it to 32 and it's got all these settings. So here you can change it to like Celsius. This is that uh, battery safety. So you can do high, medium or low. And in the manual, it kind of tells you what each one is. If you're connecting this straight to the starter battery, you're going to want to set it on high. That way um, this guy shuts off earlier. And then we have the dimmer. So you can't really see this right now. Well, you can kind of see it, but you can dim the light. 
And then this setting here is to turn the Wi-Fi on and off. So you can probably save some battery and leave it off if you like. All right, so it's already starting to cool and uh, you can see the light works as well. So you can see here, it kind of hits the top, which I can still get some small things out. But I can pull this out, so let me show you. So you can see now I can uh, open it a pretty decent amount. I'll probably figure out something to hold it up. So it's probably a good idea to pre-chill the cooler if you're gonna use it. I don't plan on leaving it plugged in all the time, um, but it's always a good idea to have a, a 110 outlet plugged in while you're at home, since I only have one battery. And I don't really drive this vehicle that much so that I can get this down to like 32. And then once it's down there, I can unplug that. And then once this is wired and ready to go, then I can just feed off of that from there. Because once it gets down to the 32 Fahrenheit mark, the compressor is only going to kick on when it needs to. And according to Dometic, you know, depending on some circumstances like 90 degrees outside or something like that, um, it says it only draws about 0.74 amp hours, which is really low. So it should have no problems running on that single battery for, you know, maybe a day. But like I mentioned, I have that backup jump starter just in case. And if it becomes a huge problem, I might end up just getting a Jackery or a Goal Zero to power this. That way I don't have to worry about that. I can just plug it into there. And then um, that'll kind of solve that problem. So I might go that route instead, but we'll see. And then um, I probably can use that outlet to still charge that Jackery. So, and then the Jackery should fit over here pretty okay, I guess. So we'll see what I decide to do, but yeah, it seems like this thing is, uh, working pretty good so far. Well that's a quick look at my Dometic fridge. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the install and get everything wired up and maybe do a couple runs before I do another video on it. Um, but I'll show you guys kind of the long-term review as well as uh, my thoughts on it um, with the one battery setup. If it ends up being a problem, I'll probably purchase you know, a Goal Zero or a Jackery and then do another video and kind of share my thoughts at that point in time. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.